Hi folks, Vince here with the Tinkerer's Workshop. I thought I'd make a quick little video just to show you my latest purchase. This is an Atlas milling machine. It's a horizontal mill. I bought this off of Craigslist just a couple weeks ago. Um, got it dragged down in the, my basement shop here and thought I'd kind of run through it with you. Just kind of looking at some of the features on this particular mill and some of the things to look for if you're shopping for one of these. So let's take a look. Okay, here's the mill. This is a model MFC. Um, Atlas made several models of these mills over the years. I think they came out with the first one around 1940. Um, when they first came out with them, they had three different versions. Um, they had one that had no power feed at all on the table. You simply you cranked it with handles at either end by hand. They had one that was operated with levers. There was a lever in the front to move the table back and forth, and I think a lever on the side too to move it up and down. That was for production type work. You could set up stops and do repetitive work. And then they had the power feed model, which is what this one is. It has a, a gearbox um, down here, and it's driven by a shaft with universal joints. There's some gear mechanism back here, so you can change speeds. They call this the change-o-matic. Um, it's a little bit, a little bit tricky to use, but you have to you pull this, you pull this out, and then turn this to change the speeds for the uh, feed. And there's a little window here that kind of gives you a chart inside of what speed you're, what feed you're using. Um, so <coughs> the the power feed model was known as the MF or the MFA. Then they had an MFB, and this is the MFC. They're all power feeds, the MF, A, B, and C, but the difference with the C is that it had provision for a support for the overarm. There was a, there was a, a casting that you could mount on the end of this overarm, and it ties into the knee down here, and just makes this a lot more rigid, so there's no flexing when you're cutting. Uh, unfortunately, the seller did not have that casting. They're often missing. That's one of the, probably the most common items that are missing off these MFCs. Um, and to find them, if you do find one, they usually go for quite a bit of money, just that one casting. Pretty easy to make something. Um, just get a bar of steel and you, you can find guys that actually make them and sell them aftermarket ones. So not a, not a deal breaker, but would have been nice to have the real one. Um, one thing that this this mill did have was the uh, kick out. Uh, this is kind of a another little piece that often gets lost or misplaced. Um, if you're, let's see if I can show you how it works here. If you're using the power feed, the power feed is engaged by flipping this le little lever up, and that engages the gears in the gearbox to run the power feed. So <clears throat> the table will start moving. You can run it in either direction by using this tumbler over here. Um, but usually you're running the table this way, and as the table gets closer, this kick-out lever, when it gets to the end of the travel, it'll automatically hit that mechanism and kick it out. So it stops the table from traveling. So that's kind of a nice thing to have. Um, this mill had the original Atlas Vice, which that's a plus. Uh, I don't believe that the mills were sold with the vise. I think you had to buy the vise as an accessory item for the mills. And the nice thing about the Atlas vise is they're made for the machine, so they're scaled just right, fairly low profile. Um, the vise itself is is rugged enough for, for its purpose. It's nothing fantastic, but it's more the size. Um, you can find the vises separately sometimes on eBay, but again, they're kind of expensive. So it was nice to have the original one here. Um, he had one arbor. Originally, Atlas offered a 7 8 inch diameter arbor and a 1 inch diameter. This is the 7 8 He did not have the 1 inch, but at least he had that. There's a drawbar that you tighten from the back of the mill, and that pulls the arbor tight. Uh, so that was in place, which is good to have. Sometimes that's missing. Uh, let's see what else here. Controls for the knee. This is your Z-axis to move the knee up and down. 
um, Y axis front to back and X axis you have cranks on either end of the table to move it in either direction you also can use the power feed of course so those all worked fine he actually plugged this in just so that I could see that it actually was running um, it, it did work I didn't want him to run it too long actually because it had been sitting I think he said for 20 years without being used so I was kind of nervous about him running it too long without any oil or lubrication on it but so anyways let's kind of move around here and take a further look um, Back gears, Th this model does have back gears. Um, the back gears are, are back in here. I don't know, it's kind of hard to see them, but this is one thing that <clears throat> is often broken on these lathes. There's a lever here to control the back gears. You pull this one out and then move this le lever to engage the back gears. Um, these often are broken off. So this one isn't, nice, nice to find one that isn't broken. This knob is not original, but it works, so. That's fine. Um, this would have originally had guards covering the belt. There were two guards, and he actually did have them. They were sitting to the side. Not sure why, but there's a pin here that holds the guards in place, and he didn't have that, so I'm guessing that's why the guards were off. But one guard goes over like that, and then <coughs> there's a lower guard that cover the rear belt here so pretty easy probably be pretty easy to get these put back on um, it just needs a pin it's nothing more than a piece of round steel stock so I'll make something there to put those back on um, one thing that I noticed right off the bat let's see if you can see this but it does not have the original motor uh, that's not a deal breaker for me the original motor mount is also missing, which was, that was a little more of a bummer, but, you know, whatever, whoever cobbled this together, it, it seems like it works, so, like I said, not a deal breaker, um, and I'd noticed that before I bought it, so I was okay with it. When I got this home, I started looking at it a little closer, and I did notice that the counter shaft has some damage, um, again, it might be kind of hard for you to see this, but it's been... It's been broken here and brazed back together. There's a break here and another break here. Looks like they did a decent job brazing it together. It looks pretty true. Um, so it seems to work okay. Again, not a deal breaker, but it's something else just to be aware of. Um, let's see what else. Oh, I did notice too on the vise. Started to clean that up and noticed some braze in the vise jaws, which I thought, oh man, looks like maybe the vise got broken, but the more I looked at it, the more it looks like he just was actually filling the divots. It probably got drilled into or cut into, and maybe he was just filling those with some brazing. So the vice, the vice actually is in pretty good shape. Um, the main reason I bought this mill, <clears throat> I actually already have one of these MFCs uh, that's in pretty good shape, but I bought this one because it has something that my mill does not have. And if I can turn this around, I'll show you. This mill has um, something that's kind of a rare accessory. It's a automatic uh, coolant pump. I guess not automatic, but it's a coolant pump. The pump sits in the, the uh, base of the mill and pumps coolant through a system of hoses. Um, you can see it here in the front. There's a hose that comes up here and goes up to the top here. And then there's a little spigot that comes down here. It'll dribble uh, cutting oil or coolant onto your workpiece. And then it runs into the table. There's a groove in the table. It kind of flows down to the bottom and out a little port here and runs back into the base of the mill. So it just recirculates the, the cutting oil or coolant. This is kind of a rare accessory. I uh, don't see them too often. When you do, they usually sell for quite a bit of money, so it's kind of worth it to me to buy the mill just to get this accessory. Um, I had never seen one of these before actually in person, so I'm going to pull this out just so you can kind of take a closer look at it. Okay, so here's the pump removed from the mill. Uh, again, this is the M1600A coolant pump.
It was sold as an accessory by Atlas. Um, this is the back plate that you would see from the back of the mill. <clears throat> this is the actual pump. Let me turn it around this way. Maybe you can see a little better. There's a label right here. Heinz. It's not the same as the ketchup maker, I'm sure, but Heinzy. <clears throat> this this uh, pump motor would sit inside the mill, and you can see that this plate actually is a little bit higher than the mill. So this there's a there's a recess in the bottom of the mill, and this sits down below the in the recess, so that you fill up the bottom with cutting oil or coolant, and that acts as a reservoir. Um, there's an impeller inside this little cage here that's driven by this motor and that impeller spins around, sucks the coolant through the screen to screen out any swore for metal chips and then it pumps it through this, this tube here and goes up into uh, a little spigot that dribbles the coolant onto your workpiece. So then the, this back plate here you can see uh, it's got a separate uh, on off switch here to control the pump and a couple little gets oilers to oil the motor one at the top one at the bottom there there's a couple of holes here and uh, let's see one down here <clears throat> and I think that's where, originally where the tubes came out um, one to one was an outfeed tube and one was the uh, tube to flow back it was the recirculating pump so what, would, what it would do is pump the coolant, it would dribble onto the workpiece, and then there's a, there's, a little, um, there's a little drain at the bottom of the table, and it, the, the coolant would drain through, the, through this hole in the table and flow back into the bottom of the mill and get recycled that way. So It's kind of a neat little accessory to have with an Atlas mill. Like I said, it's, it's a bit rare, so I was glad to get it. I think this one needs a little bit of work just cleaning up. It does run, I plugged it in, and the motor is working, so I'll get it cleaned up, um, maybe paint it, um, clean up the inside a little bit, get it lubricated, and I'll probably install it in, in my mill that I currently have. So one last thing I wanted to show you, uh, after, I, after we made our deal and I got the mill all loaded up, the seller said, oh, I forgot it, I've got some cutters too, if you want those, and he took me back to another garage that he had, and he had just drawers of cutters. And he goes, yeah, they all go with the mill, so take them. Uh, and that was like just an awesome plus. Um, one, of the, one of the things I was really excited about is a lot of these are, are uh, involute gear cutters, which they're kind of hard to find. And if you do any gear cutting, it's nice to have them um, all kinds of different sizes. Never seem to have the size you need, but more you have the more your chances are that you will so uh, this alone was kind of made it worthwhile to make the drive out to pick that up so all in all it was a, it was a good purchase um, hope to do another video some point on actually cutting the gear and uh, show you the process of doing that on the Atlas milling machine thanks for watching